the Drug Foundation has chosen to deliberately break the law. They're offering to test your stash. They know it's a crime, but they say it's a vital service to protect, to prevent harm, to keep you safe. My question is, should they be doing this? Gareth Hughes. Yeah, I think it's awesome. It's such a valuable service, and we shouldn't be making them potentially face criminal charges for doing a public service. So just straight up, if the cops catch you at a music festival, what happens? Well, we know some cops treat it with discretion, others don't, but what we know from the survey is that me heaps of people are consuming drugs, which they actually aren't the drugs they thought they were consuming. Let's make it a safe what, what, and healthy what about issue. You, <laughs> what, what about you, Matt Doocy? I mean, when you go to a rave, what do you do? <laughs> uh, big box, little box. <laughs> Just do that again, here yeah, we go. No. <laughs> oh. my, my days of the fridge in Brixton and London are well over, but I think the results okay, of so those so tests, so they, they, I mean, there was no surprise there, but we've got to challenge words, I think. Uh, safest way of taking a drug is not to take it at all. No, no, so hang I, on. I don't think hang it's, on. But hold on, Wallace. I don't think it's making it safe. Doing that testing is reducing the risk by the user having an informed decision on what they're I, taking. I know, Doesn't I know. make it safer. You've just shown us the big box, little box. You've, you've name dropped the fridge. You were a bit of a party boy. I mean, let's get real. People take these sort of pills or whatever. What about making it a health issue? Yeah, well, I think when you look at the trajectory of our drug policy now going forward over the next five years, it will be balancing it between a criminal justice issue and a health issue. But we've got to be clear, you know, when we're talking about problematic drug use, we're talking about something that impacts heavily uh, socially and in the criminal justice circle. So we've got to be very cautious about this. All right, Tracy Martin, yeah. what do you think of the Associate Minister? Uh, Health Minister Peter Dunn says he doesn't have a problem with this uh, issue of sort of, uh, you know, testing your stash. What do you make of well, it? Well, to me, it sounds very much like needle exchange. Right. All right. It just sounds like needle exchange. So what we're talking about is a program to try and keep some of our citizens safe while they've got a larger issue that we need to deal with. Because... Um, they some. Well, well, not, well I'm, I, I don't need their service. So some New Zealanders <laughs> need their service, which is to check their stash, right? Um, so I see it that way. But, um, but downstream, there's a much larger issue then. There it's is against the, the law, though, is it? It's against the law. Well, I don't think they should be... If, if it's what they're doing is keeping some citizens sta safe in the same way, I don't think that they should be against the law. All right, what about, what about you? The drug laws have been around for, what, over 40 years. Is it time for them to be updated, Chris Hipkins? Well, absolutely. What we're doing now doesn't work. And, in fact, what we've done is create a, a black market for drugs that's um, forced... But the, the gangs have taken over, and so we've created a market for criminal activity. Mm. Um, it's not working. We do need to treat drugs as a health issue much more than as a criminal so justice. Should, should a Labour government come to pass? Should yep. a, what, what would you be pushing for? Well, we've got to start from it by looking at the health effects first. Uh, the criminal justice, b resorting directly to criminal justice matters. Are you going to uh, do anything? Yes, absolutely. There'll be law reform. <laughs> the Law Commission have actually produced some really good recommendations on this, which have largely been ignored by the current government. We could start there. That would be a really good place to start. All right, let's go to Charlotte. I've got Sue Bradford here, former Green MP, activist, and now the subject of your new book, Constant Radical. So nice to have you here. Do you, what do you think of what they're saying? Is, is the government got it wrong? Do we need to update our policies? Absolutely. It's way past time our political parties came into the modern era and followed the example of Portugal and decriminalised all drugs and treated it as a health problem. Mm. Um, put in ad place adequate services in terms of health for people with alcohol and drug addiction um, and, and really seriously dealt with the true problems of drugs like pee, which are, have an incredibly negative impact on so many people. Look at where the real problems are and not at criminalising people who are enjoying a good time with good drugs. <laughs> 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 yeah. How much has the drug scene changed? Because you talk a lot about um, <laughs> drugs and your drug taking 40 or so years ago um, in the new book. It has changed over time? Uh, yes, um, obviously. The <laughs> Very much so, and, and I think one of the biggest changes has been um, P and the, onset, the, imp, the dreadful impact of that um, through so many communities and working with unemployed people and beneficiaries and people with housing problems. The, the, the crossover impact of P with, with um, income, lack of income, lack of housing, and the dreadful situations that ha 
people find themselves in. We need, we need improvements in all these areas, welfare, housing, jobs. And unless the drugs issue is dealt with as well, we're never going to solve it. It needs to be treated totally. If people want to get off drugs, they need access to services when they want it, because that's the time that they can best be helped. So we have this madness with people from the Prime Minister on down, saying, oh, these hopeless unemployed people on drugs and abusing unemployed people for it. When if those people want to get off, they, if they go and look for a service, they'd be very lucky to get access at that moment, at that critical moment. And until we really start dealing with issues like that, all the costs are downstream in unemployment in the justice, in the mental health system, and actually in death as well. Yeah, it's very serious. So it, what about marijuana? Yes or no? Decriminalised? It, well, I think all drugs should be decriminalised. Right. Yeah. Yeah. Big call. Oh. Big call. <laughs> Round of applause for Sue Bradford there. Hey, Charlotte. Charlotte, are you there? I'm here, Willis. I'm Do, here. You just jumped to someone else. I want to sort of ask Matt Ducey. So, picking up on what Sue Bradford said. So, when you're doing the black box, the, the, the big box at the fridge, how have drugs changed since when you did them? So I actually worked in mental health services before I became a politician. I worked in drug services out in the hut with young people. So really saw the effect at that developmental age of young people who started off experimenting and then got into a very habitual use. So my point is, every country is grappling with this. No one's got it yet. Uh, we need to think about how we learn from other jurisdictions. It needs to be okay. evidence-based, well, and then we can look at it. But, uh, that, but we are moving that, to a Matt, harm reduction model. Speaking of that, yeah. let's get really bold. Let's really, let's really kick it out there. What about doing what Portugal does, decriminalising all drugs, as they have done since 2001? They've seen a dramatic fall in overdoses, heroin use, and convictions. Would you support a decriminalisation in I all think, drugs? I think we can learn from the experiences from yes other no? countries, but it's not conclusive yet. And I think we take a very thoughtful, right. careful, of, and cautious way through. There's a lot of booze in the audience. Okay, Chris, what are you decriminalising all drugs? Let's Look, get let's get bold. I, I wouldn't go that far necessarily. I think that I want to see the evidence as well. I think actually I do agree with Matt. All right, Labour would it? Labour would it? Oh. Time for time for bold action around yeah. drugs. Decriminalising all. Portugal's done it. The fly well, high. So, hang on. If I can just say, so if you say de decriminalising all drugs, then you mean P. Yes. You mean meth, you mean all those sort of drugs. Heroin, Well, I certainly can't make any commitment all like right. that. All right, not getting you know bold here. Green Party, the Green Party. You know what, Wallace, you asked what's changed. And what's changed is in this country we've arrested thousands of people. We've imprisoned thousands of people. People have been too scared to go to a doctor when they've seen her because they've been I, too scared of arrest. That's what's I suppose, changed. I suppose I'm asking. He didn't answer I suppose that question. I'm asking, the war on drugs hasn't worked. Yeah, they lost it against the whole group of people on drugs. Ask the direct question of the Green Party. Will they decriminalise all drugs? We are looking at it, but our priority <laughs> is... <laughs> no, no, we've got a bill in front of Parliament which every member in this table can vote on, whether we're going to immediately allow medicinal cannabis. Our policy is to decriminalise yeah, yeah, cannabis, same. and we can look at okay, all drugs I'm not convinced. That step. Not convinced in the answers there. Uh, Charlotte, what, what do you got? Wallace, I've got Russell Brown here. Um, oh, Russell, Russell's here. Yeah, Russell Brown, public address, hard news. You have just done a huge big podcast on Radio New Zealand all about drugs. What are you, and, you, and you're a festival goer. You go to festivals. What do you think of this idea of having drug testing machines or, or sort of science at these music festivals? Um, it should be part of the health... You know, the ideal state is that's part of the health and safety requirements of any event like that. Um, and Do you think people will actually use it, though? Isn't it... Don't agree. Even the police... I talked to them about this. The, the police have basically tried to avoid saying that they will, they will do anything, you know. And, um, it, but, and uh, you know, it, it will happen in three years or so time, but it would be nice if it could happen sooner because there's a big risk for... Uh, event promoters. It's a huge risk, and for people to, it's, yeah. It's 10 years imprisonment. Yeah. 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 Thank you, Russell. Nice to have you here. Welcome yeah. to Back Ventures. Very, Wallace. very cool. Very good. We've got a lot longer on that. What are your thoughts on this? Hashtag Back Ventures with an ES. Next up is uh, begging a human rights issue. That's soon. Supporting local content so you can see more of New Zealand on air.